Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for checking out the channel. So today, if you couldn't already tell by the title, we're gonna show you guys how to do a braided clutch line on a Neon SRT4. The car that I'm starting with, as you can see, is already in pieces. So there's a few variables that may change what you need to actually take out to get to what we're doing. And the easiest parts you can have out of your way would be your up pipe, with, with, whether you got an aftermarket one with a block valve or the stock one, whatever. So you get the up pipe out of the way, battery tray out of the way, and then anything else that you need to get back here if you got a battery location you don't have to worry about that if your intake's in the way you know right here then you'll have to take that out but once you get all of that stuff out and you're at this point with the car i can show you how to take care of this job I'm hoping at this point that you guys at least know how to do all that stuff because if you can't really do a charge pipe or a battery tray i don't think you really need to be taking this job on and i'm not saying that to be mean or anything like that i'm just being honest because this job is a bit harder and a bit more technically involved than a simple task like that. So, so if you need assistance to try and get into a, uh, doing a job like this, then definitely check out some of the other how-to videos we got. Familiarize yourself with the car, with the tools, work with it. Make sure you know what you're doing before you get into this because you can really leave yourself stranded somewhere if this is a car that you're relying on or easily damage something in the clutch and the transmission because it wasn't bled right and you drove it or, or you know, if a fitting comes loose or something and you lose brake fluid. I mean, there's, there's a lot of potential to cause more harm than good not doing this part right so i just i just want to make sure that anybody that takes this job on kind of has an idea or a general understanding of what they're doing just it's something they've never done so once they see how it's done it's easier for them to just go in there and do it or you know the go at homer guy that's trying to do all this stuff or is mechanically inclined just hasn't done this type of work yet and needs to see how it's done so the parts that we're going to use to take care of this is we're going to obviously you're going to need some brake fluid because you're going to drain it all out and brake fluid is what you use in the clutch circuit. And then you're also going to need two fittings and a clutch line. Now the fittings I'm using are Russell branded parts. The part number on those is RUS640281. And then there are two different part numbers that you would use for the clutch line. Now it's gonna depend if you want the 30 inch, which will come out finished like this, or if you want the 36 inch, which will come out finished like this so the 36 inch it loops around the battery tray a little bit more to it obviously because of the extra six inches but if you guys have something you're trying to work around that 36 inch line is an option i'm going to put both in the description so check that out depending on which one you guys want and then i'll just put the link in the description for the fittings that we're using from russell as well now the parts that i'm using i'm getting directly from summit so if you guys want to steal the part number try another vendor if you got anybody closer by all means see what they got that's where i get my parts from so if you guys want to get the same parts it'll all be in the link here go ahead and check it out in the description if you look them up on amazon they're not i don't think they'll come up as p clamps they're insulated clamps and you get different sizes these 3 8 ones are a pretty good size for that clutch hose or for that line and then you can just run a self-tapping screw or the plan that i'm going to use is the actual factory hardware that holds this stuff down when i put the battery tray in i'm just going to put this on it put the nut down and i'll do the same thing down here and then bam with this one we kind of unfortunately broke it off because i wasn't using that clutch line it looked ugly i just wasn't happy with it we're going down to the 30. the tools that i use uh to do this is whatever you're going to need to take your battery your charge pipe and intake pipe out so you can get all that stuff out of your way. I'm not gonna go over that because there's a lot of variables depending on what battery kit you have, what up pipe you have, what intake you got, as to what you're gonna need to take it apart and this car doesn't have those in it. So I'm gonna show you guys the tools that I used with the parts that we used to take care of this car here. For the fittings on the clutch line, one end was a half inch and the other end was a 7 16 So I got 11 16 and then two half inch wrenches because the fittings themselves they are half inch fittings so one end of the line is half inch so you need that uh, you need two half inches to tighten that guy up and then on the other end you just need a single half inch for the other fitting and then a 7 16 for the other fitting on the line itself now i'm using a dcr pivot arm when i put this thing back together now the car did have a factory clutch pivot arm so uh, i put the dcr one in it i needed an 11 16 to tighten the jam nut for that um I also needed a 13 millimeter and 10 millimeter sockets. So the 10 millimeter is for the nut that holds the clutch reservoir in, as well as the battery tray hold down, depending on where your car is. Uh, and also the 13 millimeter is for the two nuts that hold the master to the firewall inside the car. So I'm also using an extension, a quarter inch wobble, uh, and that's what I'm gonna use to spin those nuts out. I'm gonna break them free with a regular quarter inch ratchet 
And then I got a battery ratchet that I'm gonna use to speed these guys out with. So uh, we'll get all those taken apart. And then once everything is out, to take the clutch line off from the master and the slave so you can put the braided line in with new fittings, I'm using a roll pin removal tool. Now this is right from Matco. Uh, the part number on this one is PPT13, so Paul, Paul, Terry, 1-3. And uh, this is a nice tool to have. If you plan on doing this a couple times, if this is something you're just doing once, you can use a hammer and a small punch. Be very, very, very careful you don't break the ears that hold that piece in because they are just plastic. So if you miss or the pin gets cockeyed or something like that, or you blow all the way through it, there's a chance you could break it. You don't want that to happen. So try not to let that happen. So I'm gonna show you how to take the line apart, but because the clutch line is already apart in this car because it came to me in pieces, I have a slave in the trans that I'm gonna use to show you how to take the slave out. I have a clutch line on the bench that I'm gonna show you how to take apart so you can get that connection done. But you're, I, but you're gonna be working in here. So I wanna say the connection itself is usually like right in here. It's honestly been a while since I've worked on a stock clutch line car. So just bear with me. If, if that's not the right spot, I'm sorry guys, but it's right in that area, pretty close to the backup lamp switch. So first things first, I'm gonna show you how to separate that clutch line. Hopefully you're at this point already where you're ready to take the slave out on the line and you know, what have you. So that's where we're gonna start. Let's, uh, I'm going to show you how to take that line apart. I'll show you how to pull the slave out and then we'll go inside the car and we'll start unhooking everything inside. Also, before we go inside, one more thing. You can do this right now. Now, leave leave your lid on because if you do have brake fluid in here, you don't want it getting on your stuff because it will eat paint, it'll eat powder coat. You don't want to get brake fluid on anything. It's highly, highly corrosive to painted surfaces. So there's a 10 millimeter nut that is right here that goes on the stud. And that brake fluid or the clutch fluid reservoir sits just like this. So at the top of that arm, you're gonna find that stud. Hopefully nobody changed the nut. If they did and it's got a different or non-OE nut on there, I can't tell you what size it's gonna be. But yeah, it's probably gonna be a 3 8 or a 7 16 at the most. Um, more than likely it's still gonna be a 10. But anyway, uh, so you take that 10 millimeter nut off, that's gonna be your clutch fluid reservoir. So now you're gonna wanna try and un unhook your clutch line. I'm gonna say this is probably the third hardest part is unhooking the line because it just, sometimes they come apart, sometimes they just wanna fight you like absolute crazy and you wanna hang it. So let's uh, get some stuff out of my way here and I'll show you guys how to pop that out and then we'll go on and we'll take the slave out of the trans. Now I do have other parts for demonstration because it's a lot easier to show you guys these parts in my hand so you can understand what it is we're doing versus me trying to show you in the car and you can't really see very good. So this is a line that's already been unhooked from the master and still hooked to a slave. But there is a sleeve here and this sleeve, it pulls down. And what I use are these trim tools because you can get them and really shove that in there. And when you get that clip shoved all the way in like that, there is a series of fingers and I could, might be able to actually show you that if the camera will pick it up but there is a series of fingers inside of the slave here. You see all those metal fingers? That little collar here is what pushes in to pull all those fingers away and let go of what holds that line together. So, got that line, got that shoved all the way in, all the way around. Actually, could go a little bit more right there. And then you twist and pull, and it comes apart. Now, like I said, in the car, it's not that easy. Um, this one actually came apart a lot easier than most of them have for me before, but working on a bench is a lot easier than working in the car. So that's how you separate the line. If you wanted to use it, all you got to do is shove it back together. You got to line it back up here. Hold on. There you go. And it just locks itself back in. So again, take this collar, shove it all the way down, all the way around. So it's bottomed right out. And actually this time it just pushed it right apart for me. So because it was apart once it pushed itself apart, but that's to get to this point. So, once the line's off, next part is to pull the slave itself out of the trans. Now there's fingers on here, on these caps. One of them's broke off, sometimes they do unhook them, but when they're fully pressed in, they are, I don't know if I got one I could use here. Hold on a second. So when the rod's pressed all the way in, this finger, right here will actually lock into this hole. So there's one here, 
So there's one right there, and there's one 180 out from that as well. So that's what keeps it in, so you don't have to fight the thing trying to install it in the car. And then once you get it actually in, you can pop those fingers out or push the clutch pedal and break them off or whatever you want to do. But uh, So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go inside and take the slave out of the transmission. First thing is first, if you have it, and you may not, there is a clutch cover. I don't know how well this is going to work here. I'm trying to go into the car, so bear with me here, guys. I hope this works out. So there's a clutch cover. Oops or inspection cover, whatever you feel like you want to call it. That's right here. Now you might not have it, you may. A little black cover just pops right out and it makes it a lot easier so you can get in here and feel for what's going on when you try to put this together. But anyway, so we got our line unhooked. There's a little tab on this side, this white tab. You can just grab that, bend it back a little bit. It is plastic, don't break it off. And then you're gonna rotate your slave until it pops itself out, just like that. Once it gets to that point, you just kind of feed it through. And the point of taking that cover out is as you can see on this one, the fingers here, this one came out, but the other one is stuck in here. Now to keep from pulling the push rod out of the boot and having to try to fight to put all that back together, you reach your hand in that inspection hole and you can work with that clip just to get it to come free and you pull your slave and everything right out. Okay, so we got our slave out of the trans. We got the reservoir undone at the cowl. Now all we got to do is go inside, start unhooking everything from the pedal and then try and push the master through and then back feed the line. So let's get inside and get this thing apart. Now, I hope the camera picks this up because this is a really, really hard spot to work with. Not the easiest thing to see and do at the same time. Clutch pivot arm, pop the factor, pop it off. Get it off the pedal assembly somehow. Okay, so that's off. So now that 13 millimeter nut, I, like I said, I don't know if the camera can see it too well because it is not an easy spot to work with. There's a 13 millimeter nut here, and then one on top of the rod. So we gotta take those two 13 millimeter nuts out. Like I said, I don't know how well you guys are gonna be able to see that while I work in here, so please bear with me. First thing to do is we're gonna take the ratchet, we're gonna break them free, and then I'm gonna use my battery ratchet and I'm just gonna spin these guys right off. Okay, so right here what I was doing was I took the push rod and I popped it back on the pedal and then I pumped the pedal real quick to try and push the master away from the firewall just to make it easier to get to. That's what you're seeing me do right here. Now comes the fun part. Trying to feed everything through. Just unhooking my vacuum lines and everything, making sure we're all out of the way. Now here's why it gets fun. Because if you can see, and it looks like you should be able to, that slave cylinder itself is physically behind the brake booster. So it kind of sucks trying to get that out. So sometimes if you have to, and it really fights, there are four 13 millimeter nuts that hold that brake booster, or basically the pedal assembly to the firewall. I'll show you those in my white car too. So they're a lot easier to see. So there's, there's your two on the bottom, and then there's two directly above that. But as you can see, right above the brake pedal assembly where those nuts are, if you have to, you can go into the dash and loosen those four nuts pull that booster out, don't take them all the way off because you want to leave it in, but pull it out just enough to get these studs from the clutch arm free so you can get the body out without hitting that booster assembly. So let's try and worm this thing out of here. So just bear with me, I'm gonna fight with this thing, I'm gonna get it out of here. And then uh, I don't really have a good camera spot to put this camera so you can see what it is I'm doing. So I'll try to explain it to you when I'm done. So I know there's a retainer in the stock clutch line. I'm not 100% sure where it hooks into the body. Like I said, I can't remember. But this is your piece that's gonna hold that. You're gonna need to pop that out. So if you got like a flat bladed, flat bladed screwdriver or one of those trim tools like I used to unhook the clutch arm or to push the clip back on the hose connection, you can use that to get it out. Uh, but once you pop that out, feed it back through, try and get it all set in behind the transmission just like that. And because of the way that I put the car together, I probably should have did this before I put everything in because now the line is behind the ABS unit, so I gotta try and worm it all through. So I'm gonna feed all that through here and then uh, we'll bring you guys back in then. I, I should have did this when it was all out, would have made it easier, but at the same time, thinking about it now where we are, it's a good thing that I did it this way because I can show you guys how to do this while it's in the car. Now it may not be 100% accurate to where the factory locations are, but you get the idea, you can work with it come up with your own combinations or variables to get 
to get it to suit where yours is actually sitting from where we are. So I'm gonna feed this line through here though, and then I'll talk about how I tried to get that uh, slave cylinder out. Success. Okay. So, I did get it out without undoing the brake booster. It's because I got a little bit of a touch because I've done it a couple times. But uh, what I did was it sits in here like this. So I took and I used the pedal to push it forward and that's when I actually took it off the arm again. So what I did was I pivoted this way a little bit and what that did was gave me a little clearance on this side right here and then I pulled and it gets tight against the studs when you get to that point but it's going to and then eventually it'll get to that point where the studs come right out and then you have all the room in the world to get this thing around so realistically all you got to do is you pry or you bend I guess you don't really bend you pry with your hand don't use anything else grab the body of the master cylinder here bend it over and try and pull her straight out okay so we got the cluster we got the master and everything out Let's get the line off. Now I do have a special tool for that. Now what you might be able to get away with would be like a uh, hammer and a small punch, but you're gonna have to be very, very careful that you don't damage or break the pin or the housing for the master itself. Otherwise that line will never sit in there or seal correctly. So first things first, let's uh, unhook the line at the master. Cause then we're gonna put it in on the slave last. Cause I wanna put the master in, feed the line through and then we'll put the slave in afterwards. So this tool works really nice. Basically you just line it up and then spin it through. This little tool is pretty nice to work with. Versus a hammer and a chisel. First time I did it, or a hammer and a punch. First time I did it was with a hammer and a punch and it, uh, it worked, it just wasn't fun. Turn this guy all the way off. And you don't wanna lose your pin. So you save your pin, you don't, definitely don't wanna lose that. So we got the pin out separate the line and it does have a little gasket you're going to want to make sure that you get that out because you don't want to double gasket this thing when you put it together and now that's where we come into one of these fittings here so as you can see this fitting has the same end as this but there's a little gasket on it you need to get that gasket out of here so you don't seal or uh so you don't have to fight with that thing going together so you get a little pocket screwdriver needle hose pick whatever paper clip you can bend it up get the seal out don't cause any damage to the inside of this thing. Set it in, yeah, make sure the seal's not rolled. Just make sure it ain't dirty, I guess. And then, uh, like I said, just kind of set it in, get it started, walk it in. It'll feel like it's in, or it's, it's gonna line itself up. It's not gonna wanna walk around as much. Pop it in. Now, put your pin back in. I'm gonna use my little tool again, just cause like I said, it's a lot easier to deal with. It's gonna get it in so that pin is just flush. To both sides. Actually, it looks like I went through a little further than I should have, so we'll push it back through. Easy straight. There we go. Got our fitting in, so now we're gonna hook our line up. So go ahead, get this tight. Now you can go ahead and tighten this first fitting because this fitting will still spin inside of the clutch housing. Just like that. So go ahead and get this fitting tight and then we can maneuver that line any way we need to once it's in the car. Get it good and tight. Now you don't want to break it, but you want it good and tight. Don't want to have to take all this out just to do that again. It sucks. First time I put it together, I did that and I was like, oh, you know, I could do that when it's in the car. Found out I couldn't do it. I had to take it out and do it all over. It sucked, guys. Don't do it to yourself. So we got our line hooked up. Let's put the master back in. And actually, while I got this out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this pivot arm here. So if you want to watch, I'm going to go ahead and I'll put this, uh, if you want to watch me do this, we'll do it here. If not, that's up to you. You can fast forward. I'll put a link in here. That way, if anybody hasn't seen how to change the arm and they get to the point in the video where they're changing the arm, but they don't know how to get the arm out of the master, it'd be a lot easier for me to show you here. So if you guys want to see that, go ahead and check it out. I'll show you how to swap that arm with this on the bench. Otherwise, go ahead and check out the other video and you guys can go ahead and take care of all that. So first things first, you gotta get your boot out. So yeah, you ain't gonna be able to do it with these pliers inside the car. I was doing it with a hose pick in the other video. 
right here it is easier with this. Oh, come on, really? There we go. Okay, so you gotta pull this back a little bit here. Make sure you don't pull your piston out. I mean, at this point it don't matter, we gotta bleed everything anyway, but if you're just doing the clutch arm, obviously you're not gonna be at this point, but it makes it a lot easier there. So if I could, I'll, maybe um, what I'll do is I'll take from the how-to video and I'll figure out how to put one of those icons in there. That way, when you get to that point where if you need a, a, another visual to take this apart, I'll cut in and I'll put this piece of the video in, and then I'll just put a timestamp on it so you guys can put this boot back in if I can find it. So I gotta take the eight mil off, bear it back. Probably did put it in backwards, but guess what? It's gonna do the same thing. So we got our clutch arm out, got our line tight, we got this guy ready to go, we got our boot back in. So now all I gotta do is stick this back in, we'll start sticking things back together. We're gonna go ahead and change the fitting on the slave. Again, separate the arm, get your extra seal out. Get our new fitting. Kind of set it in there. Walk it in nice and good. Okay, so we're there. Got her in. I'll put her pin back in. That's it. So all I gotta do is tighten this guy up once we get her in. But uh, we're gonna do that before we put the slave in the trans. So now that we got the fitting off here, do this, make sure that we don't shoot any extra fluid anywhere crazy because now I'm gonna push this in or compress the slave and I'm gonna lock this tab just to keep it short for now come on dude you said don't fight back this much this one's just doing that for some reason so yeah something for whatever reason inside of it uh, wasn't happy got brake fluid everywhere though Yeah, get your get your slave pushed in. Get your finger set. Makes it easier to work with when you get to that point. Actually, I'm gonna spin it so I got an easier side to work with. We got it locked in and ready to go. So we got our slave dress ready to go. We got my mess cleaned up. So we got this together. Now we're gonna try and stuff it back in the car. So I got it on the brake master, but how I had to do it was push on it to get it to kind of go this way and then I just fed the studs through and then you just kind of keep warming it and you walk it back and eventually it will go in like I said I'm sorry it's not an easy spot to work with and see I hope you grasp the concept to how I'm trying to get the part to go back in so okay <clears throat> just like we planned this 30 inch line is gonna run pretty nice and it's gonna tuck down just like that and hook right in. So I'll be able to tie that to the battery tray using, but well, we're gonna use some of these P-clamps here. So now that we're at this point, I don't know if you still are using your factory arm or if you're gonna change it. So I'm not gonna show you guys putting the clutch arm and stuff in. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go underneath, we'll put the nuts on, and then I'm just gonna cut it off because it's gonna be a pain in the ass trying to work in this little bit of an area with the, uh, with the GoPro while I'm in there trying to fight and get this pivot arm in. So like I said, if you wanna see how to do that, so I do have a how-to video up on how to do that. And I will put the link in the description for you guys to see that if you need to. So you can kind of pause it here, remember what the time is, and then you can hop down in the description, go check that video out, get that clutch arm put back in, and then you can come back over here and finish up with that installation. So let's uh, get in here and get these nuts in though. Cause it ain't gonna be any fun trying to get that clutch arm in without it those in okay so with the clutch arm out it is easier to try and start the top one you got to get the two nuts through or two nuts on the clutch master oh come on do that So I got the top one on, and I'm gonna use my tool here to tighten that down. 
bottom one I should be able to do by hand. And that's right here behind the clutch switch. It's not gonna be an easy spot to see. My hand's gonna take it up anyway. Oh, just don't drop it. If you do drop it, usually they just go right behind the carpet. Just go ahead and pull it back. Oh man. Sometimes they roll back under your shoulder. There we go. Okay. So that's in there ready to go. Yeah, you're definitely gonna want some wrenches or uh, ratchets. You ain't gonna do this stuff with wrenches. If you do, then my hat's off to you. I'm not interested in that kind of dedication. That's why they invented the tools. Whatever you guys gotta do to hook your clutch arm back up, if you're if you're changing it to the dcr one like i said go ahead and check out that video if it's just the stock one that you're using i'm sorry but all you really got to do is just pop that guy back on so uh, once you get that on don't worry about pumping the pedal or anything yet you don't want to do that uh so what we're going to do first before we do that so don't jump ahead is um we got to go under we're going to go up front we got to hook the slave up because once you get the line routed where you want it anyway uh, you got to hook the slave up and then we're going to bleed it and I'll show you guys how to do that before you put the slave in the trans. So um, go ahead and uh, like I said, if, if you're going to do the DCR arm and you're at that point, go ahead and check out that link that I put in the description. If not, then uh, just hang out here for a minute, guys. Go ahead and hook your stuff back up if you know what you're doing. And then we'll go up uh, we'll go up front and we will get this thing hooked up and get a blood. Uh, so hopefully you got your tools ready for what you need. So the stuff we're using, half inch and seven sixteenths. You want to hook it together, obviously. And actually, I'm going to show you a little trick. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook the reservoir back up. So I'm going to fill the reservoir up, and then I'm going to take the line off at the slave, and I'm going to hold the line up, and then I'll lower the clutch line, and I'll hold that over the drain pan that I have until brake fluid starts to come out, and then I'll go ahead and I'll make that connection. And then I only got to pump a little bit of air out. So that helps a lot when you can do it like that. So you don't have to sit there and go in the car and just beat on the pedal 300 times to get something out of it. So it makes it a lot easier when you can kind of cheat a little bit and do it this way. So uh, let me get this reservoir in real quick though, guys. Like I said, it's just a 10 mil nut unless somebody's changed it. And then uh, we'll go ahead and I'll show you that trick and how, or I'll show you how to do that little trick that I'm just talking about. All right. Okay. Oh, so we got fluid. Make connection so you don't spill any on the car or anywhere else. So that's all I did was I just left the line off the slave, let it hang, or let the let the line hang. Eventually, brake fluid come out of the end of it. And then uh, now I'm going to tighten up that fitting. We're going to pump the slave to bleed all the air out of the slave back in. So now we're not fighting all the air that's in the line. This will be a lot easier to do in your hand. And like I said, going inside and sitting there and just pumping away on the clutch pedal. All right, so now what I do is you take that tab out of the slave that we locked in earlier pull it out, you let it come up, and it's gonna suck fluid in. Now you're just gonna pump it. Just like this. I'll show you real quick what you're gonna look for. Top this off. Now you don't wanna get it too full because you're gonna have to depress it a little bit. because you're going to have to push it in a little bit. You don't want to push a bunch of fluid back out. So you only want to get it so full and the cap itself takes up space. But, let's see if I can get the camera set up here so you guys can see the bubbles because this is what you're going to look for. There we go, perfect. All right, so slave comes out. 
push the slave in. You see the air come up? And that's what you want. I gotta get that junk out of there. But we're still getting air. Gotta keep going. Ooh, less air that time. And then I let it come all the way out on its own. And then we'll give her another pump. Yeah, we're getting some of that white stuff out anyway. I got a fluid sucker thingy I'll use to get that stuff out of there. Just, I don't know what this is. Must have been from it sitting with the line unhooked or something. I don't know. Oop, there's a couple bubbles. So, like I said with this one, you just let it sit. Slave slowly comes out. And you just kind of just hold it, squeeze it back in. You can see the fluid rise. Much easier than pumping away on the clutch pedal. Now, sometimes, you know, like a caliber or something, you don't have a choice or certain cars, but the way our clutch system is set up, we are really lucky on the serviceability of it. Because the clutch isn't anything worse than anything else. Pulling the transmission, which is easy, and the slave cylinder, you know, you don't even have to open the clutch system to take it out. You can just pop the thing out with your hands. You're good to go. Okay, so yeah, at this point, you can see, I got some junk in there, I gotta get out of the fluid, because this system's that open. But, I wanna get this junk out of here, and then, uh, but I gotta get the junk out, so you can see how I'm pumping it though. You don't wanna pump it fast, because the hat faster you pump, you know, the fluid come up like that, and you get brake fluid all over the car, so you wanna pump it slow, and you can watch it. Like I said, you go slow like this, you can't even see it push up or you can go faster and you can see it kind of come up just to ensure and then you look for the bubbles if you don't see any bubbles after you know a few pumps which with this one I think after about maybe 10 pumps I didn't see any more air so uh, with this one I gotta put I gotta get some clean fluid in this guy but that's pretty much it with this one so uh, as far as the how to itself goes guys. I'll show you how to stick this thing back together and then you're up on your own to put your battery tray and intake and charge pipe and all that stuff back in. So like I said, at this point, um, we're all bled. We just gotta get the slave back in. So I'll show you guys how to do that quick. Okay. So we got that tab put back in for the arm here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So now you just gotta feed it in here. And then with this, you can uh, stick your finger in here and make sure that that arm is gonna line up to the clutch or to the throw fork. And then you can go ahead and stuff this uh, slave cylinder in here. So you gotta rotate it back. So the line's gonna be almost perpendicular to the ground by the time it lines up, and you can see that right here. And then you just shove it in, twist it to lock it into place. And then uh, you're good to go. You can pop that clutch cover back in, but what I'm gonna undo first, pop that clutch arm off, that way the slave itself can hang itself out. And uh, you guys are ready to go. So. Like I said, if you got that inspection cover, you can pop it back in. If you don't, don't have to worry about it. But at that point, you got everything unhooked. Like I said, we got another video put together here that you guys can see for the clutch arm. So hopefully this video helped you guys with doing a braided clutch line on a Neon SRT4. So I'm gonna wrap this one up though. Like I said, guys, I'm gonna have all the parts, all the tools. If anything I've missed here, I'll take a bits and pieces and I'll cut it in and I'll throw it up in the front to make sure that you guys got all that and I'll even put everything right in the description. So the list of tools that we're using for the parts that we used, and uh, yeah, so. All right guys, I wanna wrap this one up though. I, I appreciate you checking it out. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead, leave them in the comment section. And uh, I can either update the video, update some information, uh, better part maybe, or maybe you guys are at a point with this one and you're having a hard time and maybe you need some advice on a tool or something like that to help you get it done. So yeah, like I said guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment. But. You have yourself a good one, stay safe, and we will see you at the track. Thanks.